In this episode of The Art of Boat Building, we're going to finish up the planking for Victoria. Install the shutter plank, aka the whiskey plank, and start fairing the hull. All in this episode of The Art of Boat Building. We pick up where we left off in planking the bottom of the boat. Now one of the challenges with these old cedar strips is that they still had some memory from being on the uh, original Victoria. So the, some of them had quite a curve and a twist to them. So one of the challenges with the bottom of the boat was trying to find strips that were as straight as possible so I didn't have to completely coax them into place. As I did before, I used this plastic brad nailer to permanently glue and affix the strips to the stem, the bulkheads, and the transom. As I did with the side planks, I worked from port to starboard and vice versa. By doing this, it helps keep the structure of the boat uniform. In some cases I took these quick grip clamps and I switched the head around so that they became a spreader being able to push the planks into place.
There are about four planks that not only needed to bend but also to twist. So I put together a makeshift little steam box with some PVC pipe. Despite the seemingly hundreds of clamps that I seem to own, I still needed to purchase about 10 more of these long clamps in order to get the job done properly. Fortunately for me, it's a good day when you have a good reason to buy new tools.
So I'm finally to the last plank of the boat. Now this particular kind of plank is called a shutter plank. Now, a shutter plank is when a plank is fitted between two planks that are already affixed to the boat. Now, the other name that this plank can have is called a whiskey plank. And that's mainly because it's a celebration of finishing the hull, which is a milestone for any boat build. So I'm going to get this installed, and then we'll have a little celebration. I put a little registration mark here so I know when I had it in as far as it needed to go. Long live Victoria. Whew. <clears throat> well, that's going to do it for me for today. Uh, so I'll let this plank uh, set up and let the glue dry. And then tomorrow I'll come back and we'll start fairing the hull. Well, now that the hull is all planked, we can now get started thinking about the fairing. But before I do that, there are a few questions and comments that had come up in the last episode. Now, the first thing is about how I planked the boat. And I think that I might have misled some of you when I referenced Nick Schadet's book on strip planking, mainly because He's strip planking canoes or kayaks that are a bright finish. A bright finish means the natural wood is showing. That is not going to be the case with Victoria. Uh, the end product will be fiberglass on the inside and the outside, and then it will be a painted surface. Mainly because the method of having exposed bright finishes is a fairly modern thing. And this boat is going to be sitting on a classically built uh, boat, Arabella. So it's Steve's desire that the boat be a painted finish for a couple of reasons, is that a bright finish is much harder to maintain as opposed to a painted finish. It's quite easy each season to give a coat, a fresh coat of paint. So now to talk about how those strips went on here, there are one of the concerns was about these strips that I put here in the front. Now why I did that is that this front section of the boat is, needs to be quite strong as you can imagine, uh, especially if, if Steve beaches 
the boat or something like that. If I had taken the bottom strips here, and you can see how they come, they would have then come down here and ended on a small angle. And that small angle would have created a little bit of a point out there, which in my estimation would not have been as strong. So that was one of the reasons why I did this. Now, a lot of people thought that it's not going to be a fair boat. And you can see that it is completely fair and there's absolutely no little bumps or ripples in where the station marks are. So that's primarily why I strip planked the boat this way. Now there are uh, some things that um, I would have probably done a little bit different, but that's just part of the process of building a boat. So one of the other issues that people were concerned about is that there are some gaps between some of the planks and the screw holes that are here. Now, all of the wood will get a fairing compound over the top, so all of these gaps would be filled with an epoxy fairing compound, as well as all of these holes where the screws are will also get fairing compound on it. So that epoxy fairing compound then sands very, it actually sands quite nicely, and then over the top of that will be the uh, fiberglass cloth and epoxy resin. So one of the other questions was how much is the boat going to weigh? Well, I've been trying to keep very close tabs on how much materials are weighing as I'm adding them to the boat. And I have been projecting that the boat would weigh somewhere between 75 and 85 pounds. Now consequently, last week, uh, one of the viewers commented about a boat that he had built that was in very similar condition. Uh, so it's a comment by S. Wood, <clears throat> and he says that he had built a strip planked uh, boat that was a 10 foot dinghy years ago. And he used 10 millimeter um, strips, pine strips, and then he went over the top of that with four millimeter um, uh, marine ply oakum strips. So basically he ended up with a hull that was 14 millimeters. So that's about a little bit more than a half an inch thick. He then fiberglassed the inside and the outside of the boat. And then he of course fared it and it turns out that he also had reinforced the seats uh, at the aft and in the middle, and he ended up that it was actually quite light. And he says here that he thinks it weighs about 35 kilograms. 35 kilograms is 77 pounds. And it's, he goes on to say that he was able to manage to hoist the tender on the deck all alone. So I think that my calculations are pretty close in that the boat should weigh somewhere in the 75 to 85 pound. Now, one of the things is, is my hull is thinner. It's only 3 eighths as opposed to a half an inch. And also, it's only a 9 foot dinghy instead of a 10 foot dinghy. Now, there's some other added weight in that I've got probably more bulkheads than he did. So, all in all, I think that uh, the boat, for those that are wondering, should weigh somewhere in that 75 to 85 pound range. So one of the other things that I had several comments about was how I trimmed up the stem here. Now if you remember in the last episode I had mentioned that had I not trimmed the stem down then when the planks met here it would have been too wide and it would have been two inches. So I had several people say they would have just made a new stem at two inches. So let's think through that process a little bit. So first of all, in order for that stem, outer stem, to fit perfectly on here, it would need to be use this as the template to put it on. With the planks on there, there's absolutely no way to get any clamps on there to build up the laminated stem. The other thing is, is that I would have had to have gone and sourced out a bunch of white oak and trimmed all of those down into those little 1 16th inch um, uh, laminates. <clears throat> so the amount of time it took to trim that down to its proper size 
literally only took about five minutes. So as you can see, that the other method of just throwing the old, the stem that I'm using away and building a new one would have taken a lot more time, a lot more material, and quite honestly, you would not have gotten as good a fit. So I've already trimmed off the planks here, and I've got the stem here, and so we put the stem on here, and we'll clamp it. First of all, you can see that it fits on there nicely, and that you can see that once it's anchored to the top here, that it fits that contour of the boat really perfectly. The other thing is, is that now as I can see where the planks come in here, as I bevel off this stem, I'm gonna get a really nice thin cut water on there. So I'm really happy with the way that goes. Uh, I will probably, I will uh, glue that to the boat and I will put bronze screws in here to hold it in place. So the first step of getting ready to fare the hull is to remove all of these temporary screws. I also trimmed the planks off back at the transom. I put blue tape on the transom to protect it from the saw and also on the saw blade on the rip side so that it would glide easier. I also found that cutting from the transom out was much more accurate than cutting from the outside in. Now that I have all of those temporary screws out and that I have the planks trimmed, at the transom, I can now get started fairing the hull. And the way I do that is with a uh, hand plane. I've got a little block plane here. And the trick is to get rid of these sort of high spots where the planks aren't quite level. And one of the best ways to do that is to plane on a diagonal, like so. Now what that does is it rides across any high spots and gets rid of them. Where if I were to plane with the planks this way, I would tend to maybe get more of a wavy uh, motion in there. So that's the trick uh, with the plane. I'm gonna go over the whole hull with doing it on a diagonal back and forth. It's all fairing out very nicely. Um, after I finish all of the planing, the next step then is to get some fairing compound and fill in all of these uh, screw holes and the cracks and any little divots that may be in there. But we're running out of time in this episode, so we'll have to take care of that in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Book Building. <laughs>